want to get changed just through the doors there. Again. Thank you all for coming. We do really appreciate you coming here. We want you to literally utilise us and ask us questions. We're doing a Q&A at the end, so if you think, oh, I thought of something whilst we go through today, then that's, um, that's your opportunity to basically ask. What we're going to do is affirmations. Affirmations is a great way to build faith, to build guidance, and I'm telling you, it works. If you believe in yourself, so will the crowd and so will the judges. I am beautiful. I am sexy. I am sexy. I'm strong. I'm successful. I'm successful. Now high five yourselves. Woo! Woo! Well done, guys. What we're going to do now is essentially we're going to get you guys to pop your heels on and we're going to start posing. I actually started with body fitness. It was not a category that I wanted to do, but I was guided wrong on my journey. I've always wanted to do wellness. In the beginning, they were like, nope, you can't do it. I did do um, body fitness. Did okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, then I transitioned into wellness in 2018. Now I'm actually 10 weeks out. I done my pro debut last year as well. I actually came, I came fifth. Um, with 16 other girls. I had Olympias there, so I've done quite well. You drip with experiences, yeah. which is what we want to basically yeah. give to you. As much as we can. Yeah. So I'm Sanaya, um, and I had my first competitive season last year. Um, and essentially, I was absolutely nervous out of my mind, and I really didn't expect to come with what I came with. If anything, I think I had a severe amount of self-doubt, not leading into my first show, um, but definitely leading into the British finals because going from being a first-timer to then having that pressure of, okay, so now this is something that could happen, this is something you could do. And it was one of those things where we were striving for top six. Never did I ever think that I was gonna become the British champ, um, but for me personally, the self-doubt in between that time was so enormous to the point where if I didn't have the people around me, I, I wouldn't have done the show. Uh, since 2020, I've done about 13 shows, um, helped over 50 other competitors get on stage as well, doing exactly what I do, posing coach as well. So I started in the UK BFF, I actually didn't start with NPC, even though I knew that IFBB Pro was always going to be the goal and obviously still the goal. But I think it's like Sanaya said, this stuff really does take time, you know, mm. I've been doing this for five years and I'm not even close to the goal. It might be another five years before I reach it. I think one thing that we definitely need to discuss about is the post-show kind of period. It's one of those periods where you feel like there's a lot of pressure and it's very difficult because your hunger hormones are all over the place and you want to literally, I remember, <laughs> I remember my post-show period and let's just say I ate everything I could. I think I got two Snickers bar um, and I had a whole jar of peanut butter and I'm not joking to you, I literally scooped half a peanut butter jar and I ate it. This process of post-show is difficult and you've also got to remember when you go through that process, you're still with your coach. Yeah. You are still accountable, but you don't need to apply too much pressure on yourself, especially as first timers. You need to give yourself time to understand the feelings and your emotions that you're feeling and know that every single emotion that you feel post-show is absolutely valid. I think what you need to accept before, when you compete as well is that getting lean, in fact I heard this off another coach, I'm not going to steal, it's mine, um, but prep is like, it's like going on a holiday, it's like a holiday destination, so to accept that you're not going to be that lean all the time, so you know, you're going to get absolutely shredded and just accept that the body fat that comes afterwards, it's completely normal, nobody's meant to walk around shredded, no. it's like the best day of your life for one day, it's like the best holiday you'll ever healthy. go on, and then you come back, 
because it's so easy to get addicted to being lean, Seeing right? Seeing new lines and, and I bet veins, you look at yourself veins. in the mirror going, oh, but it's, it's, it's not something that you can manage and it's, no. it's managing your expectations mm. pre-prep, during prep, show day, and please do not forget about post-show. You can't gain muscle, especially for a lot of wellness girls. I know it's a thing about more adding more muscle mass, and when it comes to eating food, everyone's like, oh my God, I've got to eat, but you need to eat to grow. Yeah, like, even bikini knew, girls, yeah. you've got to eat to grow. If you knew the amount of food I have to eat, and sometimes I don't want to eat, and I just sit there, I'm like, I have to do this because I have a show. Like, yeah. for five years, I don't think I've really took a day off. And that's the reason, is because I know to get to where I want to, I need to stay consistent. Yeah, it's extreme. Definitely. Like a lot of people will prep and think, oh, it's just 12 weeks. No, it's not. The magic is not happened then. The magic actually happens in the off season. What I thought we would do is just run through some supplements that might be useful during prep um, in keeping with the workshop today. So I think it's really important to say the first thing is you don't need any supplements and if you don't want to take any supplements then that's absolutely fine as well because in a twist as to when to take your creatine when you remember is the right answer so if for you that's with your morning drink if that's with your pre-workout if it's with your post-workout if it's before you go to bed it doesn't matter when you have it just as long as you have it at some time in the day so at a time when you're going to remember so make sure you look at the judges which is normally at the bottom there Obviously you're on a stage which is quite high up. Look at the judges, but when you come on stage, don't have your head down, okay, still chest up. There's no rush. Move them hips. Look at yourself so look, as in the as mirror. I'm pushing it to the side, you can see my side glutes. Tell them no, 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 no. 23, please switch. No, 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 no. You've been trying to cater to all the I know that could have been um, nerve-wracking, but coming on stage and actually being in front of everyone, imagine how you feel now in front of these ladies, to how you're going to feel when you're on stage. So I just want to say well done. Give yourselves a clap. <laughs> been wearing corsets for years. Reason being is because my body is quite straight on. Um, obviously with wellness, it's more lower body dominant. So I've been manipulating my body with corsets. I've worn corsets for years, but I never found the right one for me. So what I've actually done is um, made my own ones. Still weight train. So as you see, still breathe. And I have no problems wearing this for hours, okay? The only reason I've took it off is obviously to show you lot how to pose. I think the, the hardest part that I found, like from personal peer mm. experience, was between shows. From going from such a high, having sh uh, food after the show, enjoying myself, and then next day, straight away, back to it, three, maybe yeah. one, two weeks. That for me personally was really, really, really difficult, trying to just keep on ticking on through. I think as well, if you're following a meal plan for like, let's say four or five months, Maybe ask your coach if you can track instead. Yeah. You're usually fine if you get some macros, you can fit in a cookie or a muffin or a brownie, and then you can still feel like mentally satisfied that you've hit that goal for that day, rather than just having no structure. I think that is a recipe for disaster. No structure. You are investing in yourself. Never pick a coach because of how much they're charging. No. Always pick a coach of what they can offer you as a service, and can they really give you that result? Can Make they really, sure they know the yeah. criteria as well. You're, you need to fit a criteria, and if yeah. they only know how to get you lean, they're probably not the right coach. Anyone There's so many lean. variables. Okay. So my advice is always, can you afford a pair of sparkly shoes? If you can, fuck it, go for it. But you can always buy cheaper shoes and mm. then just put diamantes on them That's if you what I done, yeah. like, Loads of people do that, don't they? Or yeah. you can do that. Yeah, so, like, I diamante a lot of shoes for people. However, Did again, that, yeah, mm. that, that was a, a question someone asked me as well in terms of blinging shoes. If someone were to give me a pair of shoes and want them fully bling like that, I'd be saying it's far more cost effective to either buy the ones you may as well buy them yeah, really. yeah. buy the mass ones which have already got the full 
bling underneath. I always think if you cut corners with what you buy, your bikini, your jewellery, your yeah. shoes, you're going to pay it again. So if you buy it, in six months' time you do a show, in a year's time you do a show, you've essentially got all these things already. Mm. So they are like a long-term investment, aren't they, really? Yeah, they are. I think that's it. I think that's it. Now, so well done, everyone. Woo!